Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Greg Michalowski. I'm the Chief Currency Analyst for FXDD, and this is a special webinar uh, given to you thanks to the good people at FX Street. I'm going to be talking about uh, tr trending uh, transitions into non-trending, what that means, uh, how you can use it uh, to your advantage in your foreign exchange trading, and uh, hopefully by the time uh, our 40 or so minutes are done with uh, here today that you'll go away with something new, something that you can start to look at, something that you can uh, perhaps maybe even make some money on it. I hope so. I lose it every day. But before we get started, let me remind everybody that uh, trading is risky. Tra uh, traders should only use that risk capital which they can afford to lose. During this uh, session, I'm not going to give a uh, buy, sell, or hold recommendation. Or I'm going to try to educate you, educate you on what we look for in the foreign exchange market. So uh, take that into consideration going through this uh, report or this uh, seminar or webinar here today. Uh, and make sure that uh, you use only risk capital and you can afford to lose. So with that said, um, let me start off by saying um, I am big on trends. I am big on trends. Trends are very important to me. Why are, why are trends important? Because trends are fast. Trends are directional. Trends have to have – trends tend to have larger low to high ranges than non-trending markets. So they have big ranges. And what does that mean to a, a trader? To someone like me as a trader, I learned early on that if I traded against the trends, I lost money fast because trends are fast, consistently and in large amounts. I had more fear and I relied more on hope rather than uh, on my trading acumen. I learned that in order to keep my job, I needed to change my ways. That all came in this revelation when I started to realize that I was trending more concerned are not as concerned about trends, but trends are where traders make the most money. The trader, the, also the points where, or the types of markets where traders lose the most money and they lose it fast. I've done it. I've been there. I know what it's like. You've got to focus on trends. That's why I'm big on trends. In contrast, uh, when I start to learn about trading uh, trends better. I learned I can make the most amount of money with the least amount of risk slash fear. I, I got rid of this hope trade, you know, this trade where I'm on my knees hoping that the market returns back to break even. How many of you have been been to those uh, or had those types of trades where you're hoping that the market turns around and comes back to you just your break even level since when is, you know, we're striving to break even. We have to strive to make money. So we got uh, uh, when I started to learn about trading trends, I wasn't I wasn't focused on hope. Yet, did I did I make uh, or did I lose money? Yes, everyone loses money in tr in trading. Uh, even the best of them out there lose money in trading. But I started to uh, be able, uh, learn more about controlling risk, and then learning more about uh, trying to transition into this uh, trend uh, non-trending into a, such a, what is called, called trending market. That's what we're going to learn about today. So, uh, so trends are fast and directional, tend to have lar larger ranges uh, than normal. That may, all they needed to do was get on, the, get on the trend and stay on the trend. You can simply get on the trend and then stay on the trend. Guess what? You're going to make a lot of money. money. You're going to make a lot of money fast. Uh, so um, that is, uh, that, that's what you've got to do, and that's why I'm big on trends. Sometimes, sometimes, and, you, and uh, some of you may relate to this, Getting on the trends is somewhat easy. How many of you have gotten uh, in a position, uh, had great, uh, what ended up being great trade location, and you took your profit way too soon? Way too soon. Like maybe you took 10, maybe you took 15, maybe you took 20 pips when there was a, well, 120 pips in it. Maybe there was 80 pips in it. Maybe there was 60 pips in it. You take 20 pips and you could have made 60 pretty easily. That's three times what you could have that you gave up. There's an opportunity cost in that. Uh, but some, uh, what, what I find a lot of retail traders do, and you know, I include, my, include myself way back when when I uh, started to trade. And so even now, you know, I, there are times where I get into a trade, trade, uh, and I get out too early, uh, and uh, uh, everything is right as far as the entry, but I don't uh, do what's good as far as the long run. So staying on a trend tends to be you know, a little bit harder than what most people think. So what I had to do in uh, in that 
phase of my uh, my tr uh, trading life was I needed to start looking for ways to anticipate a trend, looking for ways to anticipate a trend. And um, oftentimes I get a lot of skeptics like, how are you supposed to anticipate a trend? How are you supposed to see the future? How are you supposed to, you know, specifically see trends? Um, but that idea... Um, I realized it's not that far-fetched if you thought about other businesses, if you thought about what other businesses out there are doing on a day-to-day -day basis in order to strive to make money in their business. And guess what? Trading is a business too, and we have to try to think about ways how we're going to make money too. And when I talk about this, I like to think about that iconic image, Apple. Apple is a uh, company that is, you know, I think everyone's um, icon out there. Every every businesses wants to strive to be like Apple, and or, or you know, or you know, to have qualities of this uh, this company. And you don't have to be 400 billion or what. Uh, in, in size to be like Apple, okay? And you as a trader don't have to, um, can relate to Apple as a business as well because, you know, trading is a business. So when I think about this idea of anticipation, I think of, does Apple anticipate? What does Apple do? Because Apple is kind of, you know, the best thing that we have here in the United States come, uh, for us right now. And so at Apple, if you think about it, anticipates what clients want constantly and need or think they need. They take those those uh, calculated chances, if you will, by um, by uh, by looking and really thinking hard about what their clients want, what their clients need. So if you were to look at the evolution of modern day Apple, we're not going back to the 80s where the Apple II came out, but just the evolution of what uh, what has happened in mo uh, modern day Apple over the last oh, 10, 15 years, I guess. You know, we had the iMac and probably even you know closer to that. But with the iMac uh, uh, transition into you know something different. This is a desktop, and then we started to move into uh, something portable, something that uh, 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 that users could carry with them. And it, they developed the iPad, uh, iPod, and that was an iPod Classic. And to get music, uh, that to, to, so people can listen to music. And then what they uh, that led into is like, well, well, how are we going to get music to them? Well, let's have the iTunes. And so they developed the iTunes to be their iPod. And then they uh, they figured out that uh, users probably wanted something a little bit smaller so that they can fit it more easily in their pocket. Maybe take them running, but go on a bike ride, blah blah blah. blah. So they had this Anno, and then they did iPod Shuffle, uh, different price points as well to get more and more people listening to their products, buying the music using their iTunes. And then that transition to this iPod Touch, and the iPod Touch allowed, tra uh, allowed people, consumers, to play games on their iPad Touch. And that led to uh, a, 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 a device that looked just like the iPad Touch, but they called it an iPhone, and they added i uh, uh, phone capabilities on it. They also added a lot of more applications uh, to it, and that led to what is now the last uh, product that the Apple, uh, most successful product, I guess, that Apple introduces the iPad. And all of that kind of spawned this uh, part in the middle here, which is your App Store, which feeds all these devices over here. And really, the, uh, the iPad uh, is you know, sort of a full circle back to the computer mode. It's very similar to this computer, but you can carry it around with you. You can take it wherever you want. Without even, you know, having having to worry, you know, to, to haul something along with you like a heavy laptop, God forbid. But uh, what, uh, what, you know, so if you look at the evolution of Apple, you, I see anticipation. Apple anticipated what its clients want. They are able to see the needs. They are able to see the trends in the future of what the clients want. One of the new initiatives that uh, they are looking toward. Uh, which I found uh, find very interesting is the idea of textbooks using the iPad. Imagine the iPad being able to take your finger over text, highlighting it as simple as that. Imagine the iPad being able to uh, press on a button 
and add text and having that text then go to note cards just like the note cards you and I used when we studied the test way back when in 1980 and 1970. That is what they can do with an iPad. So we're going to see an evolution, a future, a, a way, uh, the, uh, Apple is anticipating the needs of the future by looking uh, and seeing what consumers want today. That's the trends, folks. That's what Apple is best at. You as a trader can do the same thing. You can follow the trends and anticipate the trends and start thinking about anticipating the trends. By the way, athletes, special athletes at every, at every level, level, whether you're in Little League Baseball or, or junior soccer or whatever, um, uh, programs that you're, you, you have uh, played in, the best athletes, they also anticipate as well. Think about it, folks. Think about anticipating on the ball field, those people who have ever played sports. The best athletes out there are the ones who are there at the right place at the right time. Is that a coincidence? No. They anticipate something. Traders need to anticipate, too. If a trader can start to anticipate, if you out there can start to think about anticipating, you're going to be a better trader. So the question becomes, how? How do you anticipate something happening in the future? And that gets, that gets us to our, um, uh, our theme of today, non-trends, transitions, trends. When you have non-trending market, it transitions to the market. Think about it. Market's going sideways, moving in a, in a defined trading range, not moving up higher, not moving lower, have support at the floor, have resistance at the ceiling. Guess what that market's going to do? It's either going to stay non-trending forever, which I put a very low probability on. Why? Because traders are out there to make money. They're not out there to watch the market go up and down in a non-trending type environment. No one makes money in a non-trending market. Even the big guys don't make money in the non-trending market. They, uh, well, they, maybe they don't make enough in the non-trending market. Think about it. Why? Because trends are where uh, trends are fast, directional, have larger ranges. Guess what? You're going to make the most amount of money in the trending market. That's the driving force. Trend the market and we'll make money. So non-trending markets are a, a, are, are a, uh, the prelude to a trending market. Either the market's going to trend to the upside or it's going to trend to the downside. Now, what do you know if you, if you can think about, um, uh, uh, non-trending markets? If you can find clues from non-trending markets, uh, that say the market is non-trending, uh, and you can use those clues, those, um, you know, maybe technical tools that allow you to define risk, allow you to, um, uh, see, uh, try to, uh, see which way the market is going to the upside or the downside. You can start to anticipate a trend and also have a better chance to stay on a trend. Because imagine this, folks. If you see a non-trending market and the market's non-trending, what do you know? It's going to trend. So guess what? When it starts to break out, what are you going to be more inclined to do? You're not going to be more inclined or you should not be more inclined to take that 10 pips and run, right? You're going to be more inclined to sit on your hands. Why? Because the market's going to trend or has a good chance to trend. It doesn't happen all the time. Yes, you're going to get stopped out when the market doesn't do what it should do. If you, if you think it's going to trend and it doesn't happen, that happens. But you're going to risk very little on those types of trades. And, if, and the ones that you're going to catch, those trend moves that you're going to catch, are going to be real needy trades or have the potential to be real needy trades if you can stay on them. You have a better chance to stay on the trend if you're looking for it, right? Yes, makes sense, doesn't it? So start to look for and anticipate trends. Start to use uh, some of your tools. We're going to go through those examples here in just a second here. So um, I think uh, let's uh, look, look at some examples of what you look for in the chart. So here we have the euro versus U.S. dollar. Uh, this is a daily chart, and I use three different types of time periods in my uh, analysis on a, on a daily basis. And I don't, I don't go into too much detail of uh, how I transition from one to the other. But I will say that in, in uh, what we're going to learn here today, the dynamics of uh, defining non-trending markets, looking for and anticipating a trending market are all the same. I use the same tools in all the charts. One is, one is uh, the, the, the blue line that represents our 100 uh, bar moving average. In this case, it's a daily chart. That's the blue line. The green bar represents 200 bar moving average. And then I use trend lines and I use Fibonacci retracements. I don't have a Fibonacci retracement here, but I, but because the market is non-trending, I can connect lows to lows. And here, a nice little trend line. One, two, three different points along that trend line. 
oh, that's a significant little line right there, isn't it? Especially in a non-trending market. But let, uh, what I want to look at when a chart is when I see a narrow range like we have right here, that says something to me. It says, you know, if you look back over time, there's, there's probably not a, a number of days in, in a row where the range is as narrow as it was in this period right here. And when I see a narrow trading range and I see a narrow trading range get even more narrow or narrower, or if that's the word, um, I, I start to think, oh, this market is non-trending. This is giving me a clue that the market is non-trending. What do I know? I know that at some point, traders aren't going to, traders going to move this market one way or the other. It's going to go to the upside. It's going to go to the downside. So I start to wear my best suit to work. I start to think in terms of, all right, what is going to, going to take me? What is going to uh, allow, uh, what, what clues am I going to take from this chart that's going to say, buy it? Or what clues am I going to take from this chart that's going to say, sell it? And I'll start to define those levels. And so just looking at this chart, looking at the narrow trading range, you can simply take the highs and lows off this trade. You can take the high trend line. You can take the low trend line. You can take the 100 bar moving average. All these are within you know, a fairly narrow trading range here for your trading. So that's good. That means that you can define your risk. You can limit your risk to a you know, fairly small amount. And all you have to do is kind of catch that, that move, catch that move where the market's going to trend, the trader's going to jump on it and move this market one way or the other. So that's what I look for is a narrow trading range. Then I may look at for something else. I may look at the 100-day moving average. That's the blue line in the chart in this case. When the 100-day moving average flattens with little or no slope, what's that saying? It's saying take 100 days. Take, um, you, know, you know, not quite one-third of the trade. Well, well it is, 100, 100 trading days. In this, uh, in, in this example, how many trading days are there, there in a year? Well, there's five trading ways, days in a week. So we're talking about 20 weeks of trading. Take 20 weeks of trading and the average over that time is creating a very, uh, is a creating a line with no slope. What does that say to you? That says the market is non-trending, doesn't it? What do non-trending markets do? Transition to trending. So, ah, clue, clue. We got a narrow trading range and we have a 100 day moving average moving side, moving sideways. Slope is narrow. Um, when, you, when you see a bunch of, uh, of uh, bars where you have green and red and green and red uh, over, over this period right here, this is a, an extraordinary period where we have red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green. The market gets tired of that, doesn't it? It gets it gets it starts to uh, lose uh, interest in that type of market. So what happens? We start to get a more narrow trading range at this point right here, and that's. You know, that's a coiling of the market. The market is basically saying, I don't know where we're going. I really don't know. There's things that say, take it to the upside of things that are saying, take it to the downside. It's okay for the market to have that feeling for a while. Not too long. Because, once again, you're not going to make any money if the market just says, okay, we're going to just stay at 144.31 for the entire year. No one's going to make any money and everyone's going to get fired. It's going to be, we're not going to have retail foreign exchange. So it's got to move. And thankfully, we have the big boys who are going to come in there and going to move the market at some point or another because they finally figure out, i got to make some money. My boss is getting on my case. So they sell it or they buy it. And so it says to me when this, this these dynamics start to happen, it says to me, start to anticipate a trend. Non-trending transitions into trending. So important. Have that idea, that methodology, that idea in your mind of what that's going to happen. So what do we see? We see, um, uh, we see the market start to move. I'm not, I'm not, not surprised. Um, it was all set up in this area right here. The 100 bar moving average is right around that area. We had uh, lows, lows, lows. Nine days, 215 pips in the trade, trading range. Um, the average trading range for a day, for a day in the euro last year was 157 pips. That was the average uh, for a day. So here we had nine days, nine times one, with a 215 pip trading range. Non-trending, non-trending markets transition into trending markets. So we had all these clues here. We had the uh, highs, highs here, ceiling, ceiling, ceiling. Uh, we had the lows here, floor, 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 100 bar moving average, uh, line across, across the bottom. We have this trend line coming across. And we have these lows right here where the trend line came across. So in this bar right here, when the market crossed through the 100 bar moving average, through the lows, that was the floor for our nine days. We crossed 
through the um, trend line that, that uh, has held uh, for two months now, is that something that says, <laughs> says to you, there's a little bit of energy in the market now, more energy than what we saw back, uh, back in this period right here? Yes. Start to think trends. Start to get in. You should be thinking in this area right here. When the market starts, when it starts to really move below the 100 bar moving average in this line right here, I'm a seller. I'm looking to sell this market. Where's my stop? If it goes back above the 100, if it goes back above here, I'm willing to risk this amount for the potential for something. I don't know how far it's going to go. No one knows how far it's going to go. All I know is that I have my entry. I have a reason to trade. I, ha I am confident that this reason is should lead to something great, something great, a trend. Trend may last a day. A trend may last 10 days. It may last 22 days, like in that example right there. And the 22 days, uh, I'll go back to it. Oh, there we go. So uh, if, if you were to do that trade, do that trade where you sell in here, sell here, anywhere in this area where the market starts to move to the downside, you would have, uh, at, at the very least, probably repay a nice little move down to the 200-day moving average where you found support. Had um, uh, this was a, um, a comment. I remember this uh, uh, day because I remember this, this period right here uh, where there was some uh, uh, Greek and then, you know, uh, headline that came out forced the market to the upside. But even on this day where the market moved sharply to the upside, what did it do? Quickly move back to the downside, and then the market started to trend, breaking below the 200 bar moving average, moving to the downside. Nine days, 215 pips, pips two, 22 days, 1120 pips. All started when, with this idea that non-trending, non-trending market transitions into trending markets. We don't know how far it would go, whether you got 100 pips, 200 pips, 300 pips. The, the, the idea is you risk a little, you anticipate a trend. If you can stay on that trend, God bless you, good for you, you're on your way. If you, if you, take a, uh, if you have a good trade location, it allows you to take advantage of this first move, move to the downside. You went from, oh, about 143 down to 140, 300 pips. How many people of you have, uh, how many, how many of you have made 300 pips lately? Raise your hand. Uh, don't too many hands up in, in this room. Of course, I can't see you. But, uh, um, what, um, uh, what you have to, uh, look for and what you, you as a trader have to start to think about is anticipating these trends. How? By looking for non-trends. So, um, I, uh, there are certain clues that I look for in non-trending uh, markets that will potentially move into a trending market, and these um, these are just basic basic rules or clues that I look look for in the market. Doesn't you know? I'm not being anything uh, sophisticated or trying to get get uh, be confusing or trying to be um, advanced necessarily. Just simple, logical, common sense things. So we've already gone through the moving averages. When the moving averages are going sideways, I use 100, 200 simple moving average in my chart. When they start to go sideways, it says to me non-trending. That t that's what the chart is talking to me at. And it's saying over these last 100 days, the market, the, the average is going sideways. That is non-trending. That's a clue. That's a clue. Non-trending transitions are trending. When two moving averages converge at the same price with the current price, also at the, at, at the same level, that's what I call three is a crowd. So think about this. Two moving averages, 100 and 200 bar moving average, Specifically, that's the ones I use. When those two moving averages converge at the same price on your chart, they come together, and the price is also at that level. That's a signal to me that the market is non-trending. That's a, that's a signal that everything is in neutral. The market is at equilibrium. It's at the fulcrum of the seesaw. It's N on your car. It's if you step on the gas, you're not going anywhere. That is that is a point at rest. And what do we know by fin uh, physics? I think you know something will stay at rest until acted on by an outside force. Guess what that outside force is? Um, the market. All right. That's when traders finally come to the realization. Gosh, we got to get this thing going. And that's what causes the market to go. So I call that three's a crowd. Why? Two's company, three's a crowd. Remember that old saying. Uh, where you, you'd go on a date with somebody and, and your friend would tag along with you. And you're like, uh, uh, God, can you get away? Uh, I'm on a date with this uh, girl right here. And he's like, oh, please, can I hang out with you? No, 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 no. Go away. So that friend goes away. Guess what happens in the financial market? 
the price moves away. And that's what uh, that's my call three is a grab. Anyway, narrowing narrowing trading ranges. Whenever you have a narrow or narrowing trading range, they think non-trend. Uh, red and green alternating bars generally uh, tends to be a non-trending. Now those four little rules there, they don't all have to apply at the same time. So don't sit there and go check, 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 check. If you see a narrow trading range, like uh, like I, I looked at last night. Um, I was up uh, late uh, doing uh, webinars uh, like this one, uh, putting it together. And if you look, uh, if you followed the market last night in uh, um, in trading, we're trading the market that time. You would have noticed that the euro had a 32 pip trading range, very narrow trading range in relation to the 132 pip average that's occurred over the last 20 trading days. This is a very simple uh, way that I look at the market to find uh, volatility in the market and to find non-trending markets as well. So if if you see a 32 pip trading range uh, and we're 10 hours into a trading day that averages about 132 pips, what can you anticipate? What can you expect? What can you start to think about transitioning into? Yes, perhaps a trend type move, perhaps a a movement that's going to extend the range at the very least. All right, that's going to take 32 pip range, you know, and extend either to the upside or to the downside. That is important for you as a trader to understand that. If you can understand that, you're on your way to anticipating a trend and perhaps catching some of these trends, these trends that transition from non-trending markets. So um, every day um, I have a, a daily worksheet or, or a, a morning sheet that I put out. And if, if someone wants to receive it, you can send me, send me an, email, an email at greg at fxdd.com that has this exact uh, uh, chart in it. And I, I work in the New York session, so you'll see uh, the range that happens in the New York session. If the range is 60 pips, I look for, I start to think in terms of looking for an extension of the trading range for the day. This is what I do. And so it has all the, the major currency pairs. If you want to get that, send me an email. So there's a good chance for an extension of the range when you have this narrow trading range. Very important clue. Now, if I saw uh, the trading range, this is what I looked at this morning, and I saw 121 pips in the euro versus US dollar when I came uh, when I came to work this morning in, uh, in New York and saw that the that oh indeed the range did extend uh, we are now at 120 pips so this would give me a different uh, perspective this would give me less of a chance of an extension of the uh, trading range uh, something like the um, dollar versus yen uh, we're 21 pips or 23 pips above the average trading range so maybe that would have uh, less of a chance to uh, extend. Although um, I will also look at and see see if the market is trending or it's uh, non-trending. In this case, dollar yen. I don't know what it's doing right now. I've been um, looking at the market over the last uh, couple of hours. Uh, so uh, what what um, what uh, you, you have to you, you kind of make a judgment in regard to it. But what, when I'm looking at these ranges, I'm typically looking for non-trending because what I know what do I know? Non-trending leads to trending. So uh, this is a little technique that you can apply to your trading. Think about it. Uh, start to use it start to understand it a little bit more. So I thought I'd take a look at a few more charts and show you uh, exactly what I mean by these non-trending uh, periods and uh, these clues that happen from uh, using technical levels um, and uh, in particular, you know, some of the rules that I applied in uh, the previous slides. And what we saw here on uh, January uh, 23rd, just a few days ago, uh, we saw the euro versus US dollar. Now we're looking at a five minute chart here. But we saw a period uh, very similar to what we saw last night, to be honest with you. A 33 pip trading range uh, for this uh, first uh, part with uh, uh, this, this little part here where we were at the lows for the day. And then we, we really, really uh, uh, narrowed the trading range in this area right here where the market went up and it came down. It went up and tested the 100 bar moving average and it came down and tested. We created a trend line. Then we went up, tested the 100 bar moving average, kind of moved above it here. And then we kind of tested the 200 bar moving average, just hiding underneath that line right there, uh, and then came down and kept, fell below the 100. And we, but guess what? We couldn't get below this low. We moved a little bit below the trend line. We couldn't get below this last low or this low right here, uh, So, uh, or this floor right here. So that kind of gave the market a little bit of a base here. And when the market started to uh, – so we have time, a long period of time, and we have a narrow trading range, and we also have things like the 100 uh, bar moving average. What do it's starting to go sideways? Non-trending, my mind says, okay? Non-trending, we're starting to coil like a spring. It's getting tighter and tighter. 
I don't know which way it's going to break. It could break to the downside. It could break to the upside. I just don't know. What I have to do is listen to what the market is saying because the market doesn't know in this period. Otherwise, it would move where it was going. But in this yellow area right here, it doesn't know. So what happens here is that we do get a break. Traders come in and they do buy it up and we extend the trading range to the upside. So, I, you know, there's trading opportunities down here when the market can't get below this low. You get either get out of your trade and go long. There's trading opportunities at 100 bar, 200 bar moving average. When the price moves above that 200 bar moving average, which also happens to be the high ceiling for the day, you'd expect something. Happen. There's trading opportunities when the market moves up 34 pips and extends the range to, hold, uh, to 67 for the day. Oops, 67 for the day, and then comes back down and tests our old support, our old resistance level at this point along our hot 200 bar moving average and our low. Traders could buy against this level at the stop where below it or below the 100 bar moving average. It's not that far. That's the thing about non-trending markets is you don't have to go far to stop yourself out. So you're not risking a lot, but what you're looking for is a lot. You're looking for that trend. And when and if you have that patience, if you're able to stay in the market uh, through this level, or even if you buy it at this point, because after all, what is this, 67 pips, what's the average range? It's still low, still low. So this is, you know, this took a while to develop, but this is still a buy right here where the market breaks above there, then it squeezes to the upside. Sometimes it takes a little while to get going. But if you follow the rules, follow your tools, look at the, the key moving averages, look at the lines, start to start to talk to the market and say, held low, held low, higher low, uh, <laughs> above the uh, 100 bar moving average, above the 200 bar moving average, you can convince yourself to be long. So that's the only way it could be. And you don't want to be the other way unless the market, guess what, doesn't do what it should do. If it went up here and went below this line right here, you're out and you lost. It happened. I'm not guaranteeing you you're going to make money all the time. What I'm saying is that you can define your risk against these key levels. And and because you're anticipating a trend, because the market's not trending, you can kind of and hopefully get a trend. And that's so important to your trading. That's where you're going to make the most amount of money. Let's take a look at the dollar versus yen. A few more examples before we get into our questions here. Again, I don't, I don't see the uh, screen as far as the questions and answers go. So um, if you did type in something, I apologize. Uh, I'm just working on one screen today. I don't have two screens. So um, I'll get to your question afterwards. And hopefully we can you know, re re revisit what you, your question is. But anyway, it's just the way it is here today. Uh, this is a dollar versus yen, and this is um, going back to yesterday and, and the day before. In this case, the market was non-trending for an even more extended time period, a whole day and another day. Now, the, you know, in this time time period right here, there are some opportunities where – um, you might buy the market. You might buy it when it goes above the 100 bar moving average and it moves higher. You still have to get outside this range here. When it doesn't get above that level, guess what? You're selling when it breaks back below this level right here. And when it comes down to, to, to this level, you're getting ready to push the button to sell when the market, uh, when the market, uh, if the market breaks below this, uh, bottom, uh, uh, floor here, this double bottom right here. But it never gets there. And so the market moves up and you may be a buyer here. And then you may have to live through this entire period right here where the market does nothing. It stays in a less than 10 pip trading range for an extended period of time from about, I don't know, 2200 hours. So that's two hours, so about 10 hours of trading, 10 hours where the market stayed in the 10, 10 pip trading range. Is that going to last forever? No, probably not. Even the dollar yen, you're probably going to get a 30 pip range, something out of it, right? You know, that was the, that's been the average uh, range uh, over the near, near term. So you know, you start to you start to think of what may may happen here, and so when you start to th see things uh, like the 100 and 200 bar moving average converge with the price, what are you saying? Ah, uh -huh. three is a crowd. Three is a crowd. Let's look for the market to move. Uh, move. Now I know it happened here, and I know it happened here. Uh, well, this isn't here because the price of the moving out are here, and it moved. It moves. You know, sharply to the, as sharp as it could down to the bottom here. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work the whole time. At this point right here is, uh, you know, toward, right, right here you're looking for the market to, to do something. The fact that it doesn't do something doesn't really bother you because you're, 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 it's only in a 10 bit range. See what I'm saying? So, um, so in this case, the market then does start to move. And so you start to, if you were, you're short at this point for some reason, you know, maybe the market fell here and you're still short through here, 
which is fine. You know, he didn't hit, he didn't hit a stop up here. Uh, but when the market starts to break to the upside, what happens? It really takes off. It takes off to the upside because the market was coiling. It was waiting for something to happen. It was waiting for that clues. It was waiting for the big boys to come in and buy, buy it. And they did. And they bought it up. And they bought it up. And they bought it up. And it's uh, still going higher, which is uh, encouraging for the dollar versus yen uh, in this uh, in this uh, market. It's try trying to break out. Uh, let's take a look at the euro versus uh, U.S. dollar next. And this is uh, my final example before I get to uh, questions and answers. But in the uh, euro versus U.S. dollar here, what we uh, saw in today's market, and again, I, I, I sort of told you this this morning, I was up late and the market was um, in a 30 or so. Uh, pip trading range, the market had a low of 14, a high of uh, 40, 46. So that's 32 pips uh, of a trading range that that encompassed uh, from, oh, I don't know. Um, to, I mean, it was like it looks like 12 or so hours of trading. We know the market's going to not going to stay in a 30 pip, 32 pip trading range. It's just not. It's not going to. If it does, then okay, you're not going to make or lose money. You know, much money. Uh, for the tr for the entire trading day, um, so that's okay, you know. But if it does, if you anticipate a trend and it does start to trend, you have a chance to make a little bit more than what you uh, potentially could lose on the trade. And note here that the two moving averages converge at the same price, and we uh, uh, and also how the market held for this uh, time period, where the market held the hundred, moved higher, actually had a failed break to the upside. I'll talk about that in a second. Then came back down, held the 100, moved higher. And at this point right here, where both the 100 and 200 bar moving average converged with the price uh, at, at that apex, at that fulcrum of the seesaw or whatever, the market fell, and then we started the trend to the, up, uh, to the downside. We did get a little uh, a brief uh, corrective rally after the break below the, the downside. These are for those old traders like you who used to buy and take your 10-pip your, your profit when you had excellent trade position on the break of the 100, 200, pip, 200 bar moving average, this is the old you that would come in and buy the market back up. Why? Because it just made 20 pips. No, don't be that guy. Anticipate the trend. Look for non-trending markets to transition to trending markets. Sell against that 100, 200 bar moving average. Your risk is only this amount right here. Don't get scared out of your position. Sit on your hands. Wait for that trend to develop. And if you can do that, if you can stay on the trend, if you can stay with your position, keep the initial risk in the trade and just go for it because the market's non-trending and it's not going to stay at 32 pips or 42 pips or even 50 pips. It's going to move something more than that. You stay with that trade trade unless it tells you to get out. If it went above the 100 and 200 bar moving average, you're out. But if you're anticipating, if it does what you think it should do and you're anticipating a trend, it's not that hard to realize that you could have caught this move pretty easily to the downside if you're trading at that time. So this is, these are the things you have to look for, folks. You have to look for uh, those clues in the market that say non-trending transitions into trending and uh, focus on this idea, on this idea that th th this dynamic exists. Um, it should be a prerequisite in your mind at all times if you're a retail trader, um, even if, you, if you're any trader out there. I don't care who, who you are. Um, <laughs> if you if you see a non-trending market, start to look for a trending market. Start to look for those clues using those trade tools uh, that's going to help you, that's going to get you on the right side of the trend and give you the confidence to stay on the trend. So I thank you all for coming in here uh, today. I'm going to um, a look at the um, uh, questions here, and if you have any questions, feel free to put them in at this moment here. Um, I assume that you see see the um, uh, the chat window here, so good for you. Um, uh, talk, oh yeah, I want to talk about the false breakout. Okay. Um, let's get out of there. All right, let's um, let's go back. And look at the false breakout. All right. Uh, I wish I had someone who could tell. I'm, I'm going to go. Uh, can you? Uh, um, uh, uh, can someone please uh, tell me that they see my screen or type in that they can see my screen on a, uh, uh, as, a, as a chart of the screen? Because I don't want to just talk talk. 
I'll go back to the thing. Can you see, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. So um, let me go back to my PowerPoint. All right. Thank you, everybody. Let me go back to the PowerPoint, and we'll look at that uh, chart. All right, let's look at this uh, false breakout right here, and 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 think think the trade through. We're in a non-trending market for an extended period of time. You are sitting there at your terminal. You are looking at the, the market and you're saying, "This is a non-trending market. The 100 and 200 bar moving average is starting to come together. The 100 bar moving average has been sideways for most of the trading day here today." 200 bar moving average is starting to move up toward that 100 bar moving average. We're getting to a point where this market's going to move. And so imagine you don't see this, okay? And you're looking at this, and you're seeing the market bounce against the 100, stay above the 200 bar moving average. I'm a buyer. I'm a buyer. I am starting to think, here we go again. We're going to go. We're going to squeeze these shorts even more. That that commitment of traders report on Friday, which said that the euro's dollars all all you know loaded with uh, short positions that they're going to get squeezed again, and we're going to send this market skyrocketing to the upside. That's my fundamental story. My technical story says the same thing. It says we're finding support against the 200 bar moving average. The, uh, the, we got higher lows off here, and we're bouncing now off the 100 bar moving average. And so this is a buy. So I, I could, if you went long in this area right here and bought the market, you did the right thing. You did. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not doubting that, you know, that that's all that happened. So guess what happens, okay? So now we have this ceiling here, which is defined by this yellow, yellow line. This is one of the, one of the, the highs, okay? One, one of the targets down the road. And what we see here is the, uh, we have a high here. 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 So, oh, that's a key level too, as is this re rejected high up here. So if I'm long in this area right here, or even if I'm, I get long at this point right here, I'm expecting this market to take off to the top side. Once we get through this high, this thing should rocket to the upside here, and the squeeze is on. The squeeze is on here for this euro versus U.S. dollar. So if you went long at that point, you did the right thing. You didn't do anything wrong from a technical perspective, okay? If you have a fundamental bias, you don't do anything because it's, it's giving you bullish giving you bullish signals here there's nothing bearish there's nothing that says sell on the break of this high nothing nothing there is something that says um, that uh, the break of the high here uh, didn't work and that when the market moved back below that uh, break point where we broke above the ceiling where we broke above this high right here that might be a red flag for you to say get out of that position folks this didn't do what it should have done. Market doesn't do, always do what it th you think it should do. And sometimes those big guys may even try to get people to sucker in to put in a bid bid in the market, force uh, some stops being uh, being out there. And it's not the brokers, by the way. It's big guys force the stop, stops. And they force the stops that go up there, and then the market reverses itself. But once you see this failure up here, you have to start a failure of a high after trading in a narrow trading range where you're looking and anticipating a trend. Don't mess around with it, all right? Get out. The worst thing you can do is the market goes down a little and then moves back higher and you do the same trade again, okay? But the worst you can do is stay on that trade and have the market move really quickly to the downside like it almost did. You know, it did. It, did. it, was, it was kind of, it was, a, it was a control move to the downside, move back to the 100, 200 bar moving average found support against there, moved higher. So worst case scenario, if I went long at this point, my stop is right right here. This is only 41. This is what, 26? So my stop is uh, 15 or, or 18 pips or 20 pips, okay, on, on going long at this level right here. But I, I honestly would be a little bit worried about this false break, and especially when it broke above there, and then we had a high that used this old high right there. So I'm getting out right there. And in fact, the false break to the upside says to me, the trade's still on. I'm still anticipating a trend, anticipating uh, you know, a non-trend to lead to a trend. So it's it's turned me around, and that's what it did to the market here as well. It turned the market, this false break turned the sentiment of the market around to where they pushed it. And when it went down here through the level, it didn't stop. 
stop as quickly. It came back up, uh, you know, it went down to this level right here, came back up because those people who take quick profit didn't recognize it. You know, well, whatever. Your stop is still here. You know, your stop is still at this point right here. Uh, so you, you, you have the market do what it should do. It comes back up. You have your stop right here. You're kind of hoping that please, please don't don't do the same thing. It's just because on the top side, and and it, and most of the time you're going to get that fall through to the downside. Downside. So sometimes you won't. Sometimes you get stopped out twice, and you know you lose a little bucks. But what you're looking for is that big gain in the trade. So hopefully that helped you um, and that explained that uh, situation a little bit better. Um, did I answer the right wrong question? Um, Oh, did anyone did anyone remember Three's a Crowd sit, sitcom? Yes, yes. Um, well, we, <laughs> that was a that was a that was a different story, I guess. Um, the girls didn't uh, they weren't they were romantically involved, I guess. Um, uh, da -da, how can you recognize false breaks from the real breaks of a trading range, please? Um, that, that's another good question. Maybe I answered that uh, a little bit in my thing. Um, you, you, you don't, okay? Or, or how do you recognize false breaks? Um, when when um, <coughs> when you uh, when it doesn't do what it, it should do, okay? When I when I look at a trade, okay, uh, at, at a trade, this is again getting getting more. Uh, I only have a certain amount of time to. Do this, and I wrote a book, uh, Attacking Currency Trends. You can read about it all in there, and also come to other, you know, do other webinars here with uh, FX Street and my firm FXDD. But when I when I get into a trade, um, Solitor, I will um, what I I am looking for, obviously, momentum in the direction of the trade. So rather than go back to that the screens and you know. Uh, I want to verbally say this to you. So, if if the market's trading in a non-trending trading range and we have a false break to the downside, okay, when I put that trade on to sell because I think the market's moving to the downside, or let's not say we have a false break, let's say we have a break to the downside, and I put on a sell sell trade, I still don't know whether or not the trade's going to work. But what I will do next is is once I'm in a trade, it doesn't end right there. I then look for the next target. Where are we going in this trade? Where are we going? Is there another low down there that that we have to get through? Most of the time, there is. There's an there, you know an an, an old low uh, is is uh, down there from the past where we have to get through. If we get through that level, then then opens up the door for further selling, so on and so forth. Is there a retracement level? I use the Fibonacci retracements. Is there a moving uh, another a moving and uh, if I'm looking at the five minute chart, is there an hour hundred bar moving average that we have to get to? I start to map out the direction of the route that we're taking. I call you know I I, I call it you know uh, uh, riding on or, or, or traveling on the bearish highway. Imagine uh, that the market's going down. You sell. You're on what is called my, my imaginary bearish highway. On a highway, what do you have? Exits along the way that you have to get past. So I sell 84. I have to get to exit 72. If I get past exit 72, then I'm working toward exit 55. If I get past exit 55, uh, and all those levels have have are 72, 55. They're not just random things. They're things. They're level. They're exits defined by a moving average, by a, a Fibonacci retracement, by a trend line, by an old low. That's all I use is trend lines, and an old low is a horizontal trend line. I'll use an old uh, trend line. I'll use a Fibonacci retracement. I use a moving average. I'll look at the hourly chart and look and see if there's a level that I have to get through on the hourly chart, a, a, a trend line, or, or a, all these become exits on the bearish highway. And if I get past that exit, guess what? I'm still traveling on the bearish highway. Okay? Visualize it. Very simple. You don't need to see a chart to see that drive down the road. Until you get to exit 34, and exit 34 is where the, uh, uh, you know, where the 100-day moving averages and the market bounces off that level and comes back to the top side. So, getting back to your example, how do I know what's the false break? Well, if it goes through exit uh, 84 and I go short, and we can't get to exit 55, 
and the market finds support against the 38.2% retracement at that level. And the market moves back up and goes through exit 84. I'm out. I'm out. I don't have to risk a lot, you know, uh, you know, to, to, you know, know that I'm wrong, that it couldn't get to the next exit on the bearish highway. So that's the way I play. And sometimes you get whipped around. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, it's trading, right? Again, we're trying to anticipate a trend and catch a trend and get more than these little losses that we're having because, you know, a lot of times, you know, you'll get that initial reaction. So it's not like, you know, it breaks through exit 84 and goes below 84 and you get a little move down to 72 or something. You just don't get to 55. You don't get to that level. The market dies and you don't get the momentum and you're like, uh, you know, it, this should have had momentum. This break of this range should have had momentum. If it's non-trending for a long period of time or an extended period of time, it should have momentum. Gets to another good point, I guess, is that if, you know, just because a market's in a 30 pip range over a, an hour or two hours doesn't necessarily mean that that's, that's a, you know, condition for a trend type move, okay? It's just, you know, it's, it's called early far east session. When you start to extend and extend and extend and, 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 and get to the point, and this maybe, you know, has to do with patience in your trading, where, where, uh, you come in, uh, where, where you don't trade because, you know, you're still not sure of, you know, the market's still trying to figure out what it wants to do. But if you start to get to 10 hours or 8 hours or something like that, that's a cool, that's a third of a trading day. But the market is now just wasted. It just wasted the Asian session, did nothing. And so guess what? London's going to come in and they're going to do something along it. Well, not, not typically. So you start to look for that. I hope that answers your question again. And I could spend, you know, I could spend a whole another two hours on, you know, talking about what we just talked about, but not really, but spend some more time. Anyway. Uh, do you think institutional traders are, or, uh, and or market movers attend this webinar? No. <laughs> no. You know, my, my, in, in my, uh, in my, um, the institutional traders should be the best traders out there. The other thing that they, the other advantage that they have is this. They, um, they have all the zeros at the end of their account. So, and, and they certainly have the ego as well to go with, uh, uh, the, all the zeros at the end of the account as well. So they're not going to come into FX Street. I don't think, you know, maybe they will. Maybe they are. If there's anyone out there, raise your hand. But my, my, um, my, um, my feeling is that the institutional traders um, um, ha uh, don't, you know, they do it their way, okay? And off, a lot of times, uh, because they have all the zeros at the end of the count, at the end of their account, all you need is a couple of them to kind of combine together to start to push the market in a directional bias one way or the other. Because we have all these tens of thousands of traders trading back and forth, and there's, there's someone who's bullish and someone's bearish. It kind of evens itself out in, uh, for the most part. The, the, where it gets over the tipping point, where the market trends, is when the big boys come in, and they have all the zeros at their account, and they take the, uh, the buy, buy, uh, uh, they take, they, t they take the, the balance out of the market. Right? And, and they, they force the market. Maybe it's off of an economic piece news that causes uh, the market to break below a trend line. But once it, once it, I do believe that they start the whole thing and they allow it to continue because they continue to push the market. They're, they're also looking, you know, they're looking to squeeze people who are trading against them. They'll squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it to the, you know, all the way down until they take all their profit and then they stop and the market calms down. But is, it is uh, th those big traders that get the thing going, and then there are the smart traders out there, like um, hopefully uh, you guys, um, who recognize that you're not going to move the market. You're not going to tell the market to do what it should do, you know, to go up or down. The only thing you can do is suggest that the market does something, and hope, and not no, not hope, but make educated guess where you can define your risk, where you can limit your risk, where you can accept your risk, and either you're going to be right or you're going to be wrong. And, but it has nothing to do with what you think, right, or, or what you, you did. It has everything to do with what they did. And and if they, um, uh, the smart traders, uh, will jump on the bandwagon, which, will, which will, will follow what the big guys are doing when it breaks through the trend line. 
And if they're there, if they're there, if the big guys are there on a break of a non-trending period, you'll know it. If they're not there, you'll get the you'll get the whipsaw break back to the upside. So think about you know going back to that other question when the market has a false break to the downside, the big guys aren't there. The volume's not there to push it. All right. So um, you know think in terms of that. Always think in terms of what they what you know what those big guys are doing. And and think in terms of that if they were if they were on this trade, if they forced the market through that low, they they would they would take the ball and run. They would they would they would they would do the they would follow the market. They they let it go because that's where they make their money. They make their money in the trade in, in the trends. So do they do they need to necessarily follow my my tool tools? Uh, no, but I think in, uh, you know wh what I think is that uh, they that they recognize that the market's non-trending intuitively. Oh, this market's not work, you know, moving very hard. They have to go to work every day. They see their P&L every day. They have to answer to their boss every day. And we just see it in the, the moving averages because we can define our risk against those levels, against trend lines, against floors, against ceilings. And they ultimately just say, oh, the heck with it, sell it. And they sell it and it goes down and you just follow along. It's just kind of the way the thing works. Uh, a lot of bridges on, on your site and it's going to make scalping harder to do. Um, I don't know, to be honest with you. You'll have to, um, there's plenty of people. The, the que question is, I don't do, do FXDD use a lot of bridges on their site and before to make scalping hard to do? If, um, you know, just a, just a broad, I don't know what bridges mean or whatever, you know, from a technical perspective, you know, making it hard to do, but just a broad stroke, um, uh, look at our business um, at, at FXDD as a broker. Our business is to facilitate trade to, for traders. So if you open an account with us, you know, and you can't trade with us, that and, and the majority of people can't trade with us because of some, you know, in this case, bridges or something or other, then we're not going to have any customers, okay? We're going to start losing our customers, and we're not, you know, we're not in the business to do that. We're in the business to, you know, sell bread, okay? We have a bid and offer spread. Um, we have uh, Mary buying from George and George buying from Mary and stuff like that. And then uh, well, that's where all the business comes from. It's not uh, so. You just have to believe me on that. But if you have a specific question in regard to that, you're always free to um, you know call up our and talk to a technical staff person and stuff. It's not really you know my focus here today. I'm trying to educate people on. Uh, do you use uh, BBATR or something uh, more simple and effective? Uh, uh, watching the range, uh, ATR average true range. Um, uh, I'll, um, <coughs> uh, you know, a quick and dirty thing that I do in uh, in the MetaTrader four at least, and I'll explain it in MetaTrader four. I'm sure. Well, I hope you that you have MetaTrader four and you have a account with FXDD, but um, uh, you know, I'll just uh, I'll just go to the average true range. Let's say. Um, the month of uh, January seems like a very narrow trading month, and I want to see how how it how it compares to months in the past. So I'll just go in and I'll put a monthly chart up, and I'll put the average true range of one, and then it just gives me a line that says what the range is for one month and average true range over that time period. But I keep a spreadsheet of uh, for this 20-day thing thing. I keep a, a, a spreadsheet of all the of data. Um, I have a direct feed of uh, um, and you know, end of day data and a lot of stuff, and I just do an average of the last 20 days, and that's how I do it. Do it there, but you know, uh, average range is good. I don't know what BB is, to be honest with you. But uh, it's it's a you know, think about it, folks. Okay, you know, if if uh, and this is I think is my last question question here. I got to go, but uh, you know, you know, this idea of we're we're all trying to we're all trying to get the odds of success in our favor, right? Um, card counters in Las Vegas. I'm not saying gam that at foreign exchange is the same as gambling. There's you know that's another discussion. But card counters in Las Vegas who get thrown out try to do the same thing that I try to do. Try to put the odds of success in my favor by looking for clues. And, and a card counter who knows that the deck is hot with tens is going to that's going to influence his bets. And he's going to double up, uh, you know, when when the dealer's showing five. He's going to, you know, he's going to, you know, whatever he does, 
in the card counter. And if they catch them, they, you guys get thrown out of the casino. You can do the same thing in the foreign exchange market by applying simple little things like counting the ticks, okay? There's 32 ticks for a total, a total of 12 hours of trading, a half a day of trading. The chances are that the, the range is going to be extended one way or the other, right? And does it mean that it's going to – it's going to. No. Just like it doesn't mean that the, the guy who counts the cards in Las Vegas is going to get – have his – that hand work his way. Maybe the dealer has 15 showing and he pulls a 6 and he pulls a 21. All right? Um, there's no guarantee of it, but the odds of success are in his favor. And that's what you as a trader, and our final thoughts are, are the try, uh, you know, that's what you as a trader should try to do. And that's what I try to do is just take simple concepts of counting the cards, counting the pips, understanding what the average pip, pip range is, and, and putting it to work. I try to take things like a, a horizontal trading, a 100 bar moving average or a horizontal 200 bar moving average coming together along with the price and saying that this has got to move somewhere or the other. I try to put, paint the story that, that uh, uh, institutional traders are there to make money, not out of the question, folks, and that if the market non-trends for an extended period of time, they're not making money and they've got to move the market and they're the ones that are going to move the market because they tip the balance of buyers and sellers on a, on in this very liquid market one way or the other. And, and, and we know that currencies can go either way at any time for whatever reason. They'll find the story to fit the, fit the print. And so I know these little concepts, and it's my way of counting the cards. It's my way of trying to get the odds of success in your favor. And that is what you guys try to do and think about, too. It doesn't have to be complicated. It just has to be the deck is full of tens, and you don't get thrown out of the casino. So have a good night, uh, a good day. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. Thanks to the people at FX Street for putting up with me and allowing me to go over time here. Um, we have the uh, Fed meeting coming up, and I know they have another uh, another uh, person coming in to analyze that Fed. Fed. Well, I guess uh, Bernanke speaks. Um, I guess the Fed announced a decision. I don't know what else that came out. I've been stuck in webinars, but happy to be here. All the best, everybody. Good fortune with your trading. Put the odds of success in your favor. Talk to you later. Bye-bye now. Thanks.